Good evening, everyone. Uh, so today is a quiet night at the shop. I'm here for another two hours. So I figured that I would take some time to uh, make a video. And um, this video is going to be uh, something that I don't really, um, haven't had a lot of. I've only been um, owner of this store for a few months now. And it hasn't really been something that I... Uh, I've had to deal with a lot of, I should say, um, but something that I think is very important if you own a dog. Um, and it's very iffy if it's on a list of, of things you should get if you own a dog, but it's definitely something I suggest that every dog owner should have. And this item, this magical item, is a dog cake, crate, cage, kennel, whatever you decide to call it. Um, we call ours kennels. Um, I know that a lot of people have a hard time depending on the word you use. Um, sometimes it can have a really bad infliction depending on how you've been um, raised to know the word. Uh, I know that crate for me um, really doesn't sit well. Uh, I know a family who told me from the very beginning when they had their dog that the dog would not be put into a crate or would not be crate trained and pretty much lives in a crate now. Um, I understand that it's, it's the same thing, but a lot of people have a hard time calling it one thing or the next. So kennels, as I call them, um, really to me a kennel is any sort of confinement that your dog can spend a comfortable amount of time in um, that is safe or, uh, not or, it should always be safe. Um, whether or not you, like if you have a small dog, use a carrier, as, as your kennel, um, as well as for transportation, is up to you. Uh, but I strongly suggest that every person who owns a dog should have a kennel for every dog they own. And I know that sounds ridiculous, um, especially if you own a lot of dogs, but I, I do have very sound reasoning behind it. Um, my first reason um, is, especially if you have a puppy, you should definitely have a kennel for your dog. Uh, now, I don't suggest a lot of people think, oh, well, I'll buy a small kennel now, and, you know, by the time the dog is X amount of months or weeks old, he won't need it anymore. And although that's the case for a lot of dogs um, and a lot of people who are using the crate just for house training, um, there are a lot of other things that a, tr uh, that a crate is good for, that a kennel is good for, um, and I think people kind of overlook that. Now, when you're buying a kennel for your dog, I always suggest that you buy the size that would be appropriate for your dog as a full-size dog. Uh, most kennels now come with dividers, so you can slowly increase the space that your dog has access to over a period of time. And that, to me, makes the most sense, um, because there's no sense in buying a small kennel and buying a bigger kennel and then buying a bigger kennel if something happens. Um, so for training, a kennel is... I, like the staple of training in, in my eyes because no training method is going to work if your dog is allowed to do the things it's not supposed to. Even if um, you are using clicker training or um, behavior modification or um, if you're using a choke chain or some sort of correction collar or if you are just figuring we'll just let the dog figure it out it's not going to work if your dog can do things it's not supposed to. So by having a kennel for your dog, if you need to go to the bathroom, or somebody answers the, somebody's at the door, or whatever it is that you cannot de devote your full attention to the dog while he's in training, this is a great spot for your dog to go where it can't do anything it's not supposed to. And that way you're not taking backward steps. So if you don't want your dog, let's say, to chew on the couch, or to jump on the couch. Um, if you leave the room and the dog is in the room and it jumps up on the couch, even if the dog is not on the couch when you return, the dog is going to learn from not being corrected that so long as you're not in the room, I can sit on the couch. Dogs don't generalize well. Um, so if they think, if you, if you get mad at them, or if you correct them when they're on the couch when you're in the room and then you leave the room and they jump on the couch, they don't see that as the same thing. 
Now, if the dog is not allowed on the couch ever, then it doesn't learn, okay, well, I can be on the couch when you're not in the room, but as soon as she has to get off the couch. Same thing with goes with, with um, potty training. Your dog can't pee all over the house if he's in a kennel, um, but as far as confinement goes, as, as for the training aspect of why a kennel is really important, um, don't abuse the kennel. Uh, I know a lot of people think that because the dog's in a kennel, I can leave for an eight-hour shift at work, and I don't have to worry about it, and we're just going to pretend like that's okay, and it really isn't. You would not leave your, your two-year-old child in a room for eight hours by itself. Don't think that that's okay for a puppy. Um, and like I said, I have no problem with kenneling your dog, but there has to be a respect factor that goes into the dog. You can't expect the dog, um, like, let's, let's paint a picture. You can't get up in the morning at 7 o'clock. Um, and of course, assuming that you're kennel training, the dog has probably spent the night in the kennel. So you can't get up in the morning and take the dog out for a five-minute walk around the yard, feed the dog, maybe let the dog play for a little bit, bring the dog back outside, and then put the dog back in the kennel, and then leave for work and not come back till 4 o'clock in the afternoon. That's just not fair. That's not a reasonable expectation of your puppy. Um, the rule of thumb is one hour per month up to eight hours. Now, to me, by eight months old, your dog should have a pretty good foundation of what it is and is not allowed to do. So, realistically, leaving your dog in a kennel at eight months old while you're at work really doesn't make sense to me. Um, now, I know a lot of people will, will argue and say, oh, my dog loves to be in a kennel, though. She, she begs to go in there, blah, blah, blah. I will be the first to admit that my dog loves being in a kennel. Um, under my, my uh, counter, which is just behind this computer, um, I had a great big sized kennel and the door was always left open but because the dip in the floor here, the door never actually stayed open, it would always swing shut. And my Basset Hound used to come by and push the door open so she could go and sit on the bed. She's always been like that, she just really enjoys being in kennel, but the door was never locked. So she had the choice. If she wanted to get up and stretch and run around, which is a great big sized kennel for a bath house, um, if she wanted to get up and move, she, she had the option to. And if, if that's how you want your kennel to be, then you should your dog should not want to go into the kennel. And that's the mistake I see with a lot of people is that um, they go to they, they the dog does something they're not supposed to and they're shouting and yelling at the dog to go into the kennel and the dog doesn't want to go anywhere near it because that's what they see it as is a negative thing. You don't want that to be a negative thing. Um, as far as punishing your dog by putting in a kennel, that doesn't work. Um, all a dog sees is, is, now I'm in the kennel. So, to an extent, you know, if your dog chews on something and you remove the dog and put the dog in the kennel and fix the problem and then take the dog back out and teach it, okay, you can't play with this, but you can play with this, that's going to work. But bringing your dog out of the kennel because, you know, you've come home from, from work and the dog's bouncing all over the place because it hasn't seen you all day, and putting the dog back in the kennel isn't going to fix any problem. So, training. Great tool for training. Love the kennel for training. Another thing that um, a lot of people overlook is um, when your dog is spayed or neutered. Um, they all, uh, even as puppies, I always suggest that a dog is kept quiet during this time. Um, it is a pretty major surgery, like they're having a vital, well, it's not a vital organ, but a pretty major organ removed from their body. The body needs time to adjust, and the only way that you can ensure that your dog isn't doing anything it's not supposed to is if the dog can't do it, and if it's in a kennel, it can't do it. Um, so I always suggest keeping the kennel, even after the dog is is house trained, to make sure that, that your dog has that space to go after a spay or neuter so that you don't have this problem of, oh no, the dog can't jump on the couch and, and she just got spayed and we have nowhere to put her. Um, and there's, there's nothing wrong with that. If you've crate trained your dog as a puppy, then they're not really going to care <laughs> that they're in a cage. Hey, you know, the first couple of nights it might be better because they're groggy and they're, you know, they're just kind of 
client and I'll uh, just do whatever you want. The next couple nights might be a little bit more of a fuss, but it, assuming your dog was crate chained to begin with, it's not going to make a big deal. And your dog's not going to hate you for it. I hear a lot of people say that, oh, my dog's going to hate me when I put it in the kennel. No, it's not going to hate you. Um, so, in the event that your dog does get sick or has to go for surgery of one kind or another, it, it's what your vet is going to recommend to you, that you kennel the dog for X amount of time um, until your dog is, is well again. Uh, so there's the health issue, health aspect side of kennels. Um, the other one is something that doesn't come up as often, but is just as real and just as severe and can make a situation like this go from easy peasy lemon squeezy to a total nightmare over a five second span. And that is in the case of an emergency and you have to leave your town or you have to travel somewhere or you need to bring the dog to a friend because because you can't bring the dog with you. It is so much easier with a kennel. Um, so let's say like this happened in, in my area. I live in northern Ontario and we were plagued with fires left, right, and center. Our town was uh, almost evacuated and um, I told everybody, I was actually just grooming here at the time, and I, I told many of my clients, please make sure that you have an appropriate size kennel for your dog, just in case. Because not only um, is it easier, like if, you, if your town is evacuated, most hotels that wouldn't normally allow pets will allow pets in an emergency situation. Um, and it's a lot easier to say to, to, to a hotel manager, I was evacuated from my town, I have a dog, we brought his kennel, because then there's no chance that the dog's going to eat the furniture or pee all over the floor or what have you. Another thing is if you're traveling um, and you don't have, like let's say, let's say for instance you're traveling by bus in an emergency situation, um, Having a kennel on hand is going to make things much, much easier, uh, especially with your smaller dogs. There's going to be in the hustle and bustle. It's safer. No one's going to get stepped on. No one's going to get left behind. No one's going to slip out of a leash or a collar. Even big dogs, um, space provided, travel much better in a kennel, especially if there's two or three animals in the same vehicle. Um, if so that's, let's say there's a family emergency and you need to find somewhere for your dog to go um, while you're away, having a kennel is going to make it much easier for the person looking after your dog because it's going to be a lot easier, well, it's not going to be a lot easier for you to say to somebody, I understand that it, it's, a, it's a big job and I trust you and all that jazz and I'm just letting you know that I, I do have the kennel for the dog so you won't have to worry about, you know, when you go to work or if, if you're not comfortable with the dog sleeping out of his kennel at night, we're going to provide one for you. Um, it's just all around a, a very nice thing to have in the event that there's an emergency and you need to find your dog a place to stay. So really what I'm getting at, I think, um, is that a kennel is something that you should seriously consider for, for your dog, even your cat. Um, because like I said, you never know when you're going to need one. And even if you do know when you're, even if you do know when you're going to need one, um, if you already have one and you make that investment once, um, it really, dog kennels are usually good for life. Uh, the one that I have actually folds flat, so it's really good to store. I just slide it under my bed. Uh, it's there when I need it. I know that I, it's better to have one and not need it than need one and not have it. Um, so when you're sizing a kennel, especially for a larger dog, um, you're going to want to make sure that the dog can turn around without much fuss and it's, it's head and it's like it's expanding in the kennel. Um, there's no like rubbing going on. It's not like a tight fit. Um, even if the dog isn't even if you aren't planning for the kennel to be a long-term solution, like let's say you're not planning on kenneling the dog at night, 
or during the day when you're at work, or um, in the event that you have to leave town, um, you already have a boarding facility, the dog will never have to be in there. You don't want to cheap out and buy a kennel that's too small, because like I said, in that one situation where you need that kennel, you don't want it to be the wrong size. Um, I also suggest that the kennel um, folds flat. They are a lot easier to store and they are a lot easier to travel with. Um, the only thing, the only uh, complaint that I have about the bigger ones is that they are really big and they are very heavy. Um, but I don't recommend plastic kennels for bigger dogs um, just because they're that much bigger. Um, even the collapsible ones still are quite steep. Um, so unless you plan on doing a lot of traveling on an airplane, I would suggest a, um, a plastic kennel. Uh, for smaller dogs or, or cats, uh, the soft-sided kennels are great. Um, they are much, much lighter. Um, they are snapped put together. They're really, really easy. And um, if your animal is not going to freak out and try to get out of the kennel, then they're great. They're uh, a lot more comfortable. They're a lot more... Uh, I, I think that animals sense that they're a lot less... Um, cage-like, they, they seem a little bit more comfortable with them. Um, so go to your local pet store and snoop around and see what they have. There are so many different kinds of kennels out there. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them below, and I am off for the night. Have a good one.